Hi everyone, I am Dr. Mercy Paul Silvan, Associate Professor, CAC Department from School of Computing, Satibama Institute of Science and Technology. Today we are going to see about the glimpses of machine learning. Let's begin. Let's see what is machine learning. It's a field of study that empowers machine or system to learn by itself without being explicitly programmed. Earlier days, uh, we did programming by ourselves. But now, as we have enormous amount of data generated through Facebook, Twitter, WhatsApp, and so on, uh, we have plenty of data. With the amount of data we have, it acts as a fuel to machine learning algorithm for a system to learn anything by itself. Let us see the difference between traditional approach and machine learning approach. As I said earlier, we were following traditional approach. Even now, we are following traditional approach like programming language, Java, C, C++ and so on. And in a traditional approach, we give data or we call it as input also the program or algorithm to the system where we are expecting output from the system or computer. But in machine learning approach, we have data in terms of input as well as output. That is data is called as input. So we have input and output as well and we gonna fit those into a system where we are expecting system to generate program or otherwise known as algorithm and this is the main difference between our traditional approach and machine learning approach. Let us see the relationship between these three domains artificial intelligence, machine learning and deep learning. It became trendy domains nowadays but in fact in 1956, in a conference called AI Conference, a popular scientist known as John McCarthy coined a word artificial intelligence. Since in those days, we did not have that much amount of data that did not boom as we have now. And artificial intelligence is a whole domain where machine learning is a subset, where deep learning is a subset of machine learning. Let us see the seven steps involved in any machine learning project. First of all, we need to gather the data. May it be real-time data through sensors or the data available through online. Next level, we need to prepare the data for prediction or for any model. So we have to undergo with pre-processing techniques. Say for example, while we are doing some recipe, we buy ingredients and as such we don't cook the ingredients, right? So we need to clean the ingredients, we have to grind the ingredients to make available for our recipe. Same way, we have to pre-process the data for our model. Next step, we have to choose the model. In machine learning, we have various techniques. Say for example, we have classification technique, we have clustering technique and so on. So we need to find out which model we are going to go with. So we have to choose the appropriate model for our task. Next, we have to train the model. In general, we have to take the data and we have to split the data as 80% of data for training set and 20% of data for testing set. It is not a thumb rule, but we go with this 80-20 combination or you also can go with 70-30 combination. Training is nothing but we have to give 80% of data where we have input as well as output and we have to fetch in the, into the system. And already we had selected the appropriate model, whether we go to classification technique or clustering technique. Using that, the system will be trained. But what happens in detail, you know, behind the scene is it will try to find the relationship between input and output. Say, for example, our input data is 2, output data is 4. Input data is 3, output data is 9. Input data is 4, output data is 16. What is the correlation between input and output now? Yeah, it is square function. Yes. So, likewise, in training phase, the system will try 
to figure out the relationship between input data and output data which are present in the data set. That is what is happening in training phase. In the evaluation phase, once training is over, we have to take up 20 percentage of data. So, in 20 percentage of data, we have to concentrate on input data and through training phase, whatever classifier we get. In our example, we have seen square root function. So, that function is taken up and we have to apply over the input data and we are going to check what is our predicted output. So, that is our predicted output and if the predicted output and the actual output in the data set are similar, then we attained our accuracy or we have attained our prediction accuracy. Say for example, we only had attained 60 percentage accuracy. That means our predicted output and the actual output are similar with 60 percentage alone. So, if it is so, again what we have to do? We have to go tune our hyperparameter and again we have to go back and we have to do the similar process then we until we reach our accuracy level. Once we reach the accuracy level, our model is ready and the model can be utilized for predicting our real-time data. Now, let us see the applications of machine learning. Machine learning can be useful in various fields nowadays. Subtle examples are rainfall prediction, diabetics prediction, whether our email is a spam mail or a ham mail and it is also used in recommendation systems and so on. So, these are some of the applications. Hope you had enjoyed the session and we will see in the next video lecture. Thank you.